Donnie, this is Donnie Wise, and I own Donnie Wise and Associates LLC. That is the parent company to Finance Dynamic. Also, for our other websites, as DonnieWiseLive.com, MyDonnieWise.com, FinanceDynamic.com, and also um, the EmpowerTheConsumer.com. We are going to be doing a lot of things. First, we're going to be focused on providing news resources for consumers and business business and the financial services industry. And what I mean by that is that there are three focal points we have with um, our consumer and business line. First, the consumers, we, grow, we are in a debtor society. Our banking system is broken, and if we don't fix it now, from a place of somewhat strength, our next generation is going to have to pick up the pieces of what we're leaving behind. And I hear people say, you can't do this. You can't you know, educate younger people. There's not enough time in the school curriculum or that people are so impoverished or not able to make ends meet to put some sort of plan so their kids could do better. Wrong. Um, on the consumer side, if you have children, you can make your children's life better. At 18 years of age, we should all walk out of school. If I look back at high school, and I should know, I should have been able to manage, borrow, and invest my money or know how to do it. And also, I should have known the operations of starting a small business. But I did not. I knew everything else. And it impacted my life, even with a 13-year career in banking where I had major success in what I did. and But nobody ever told me I was going to have cancer or I was going to be sick for two years and that the nightmare that I would have to face afterwards. So my grandparents left a strong country for us, and they're gone. And we're leaving debt for our, our next generation. And as a consumer, we're going to be focused on getting the family back to owning their own financial destiny and especially we're going to focus on the children on children integrating them from cradle to grave in our super parenting million dollar children by 18 and that's the book i've been working on and we will be introducing a big rollout beginning on july 11th to detail on how we are going to involve a lot of people into helping us finish up the book and roll it out in multimedia. But this is one of the reasons why we're doing this. And this portion of this video is going to be on the consumer. We're going to be, we're starting a nonprofit. A lot of the material that we're going to be selling is expensive. And it's worth it. I mean, you're going to have multimedia podcasts you have everything possible to help parents teach their kids and change behaviors of themselves to teach their kids how to be um, more in a financial stewardship of their finances before 18 under 10 years of age you, you're making the kids are making one thousand three hundred sixty dollars a year, to, because parents are competing with each other. They're guilty, but the biggest guilt we in America that we do not feel guilty about is our student students going to college with no options but debt, debt for degrees, and we are going to we want we should create a new safer society. It's easier to teach children than it is the older folks, like myself. So if you look at here, uh, the shocking stats on student financial literacy. 41% default on, on their loans, student loans. One in six teens are unable to make even simple decisions about everyday spending. I got my first credit card when I walked through the doors of North Carolina State University. And that's how was my introduction into this world of credit and borrowing and managing money. I mean, because I had plenty of it when I was that age. Financial literacy assessment, if you see right here, 
said that U.S. performs around average of countries that, and economies that participate ranking between somewhere 8th and 12th. Um, I mean, 15-year-old students in 18 countries were tested with assessments through a 60-minute paper test. Students were also asked to participate in um, math and reading assessments to provide information on their backgrounds, attitudes toward learning, experience, and money and financial products. In the U.S., 1,100 students in 158 schools completed the assessment. That's not what the most interesting is. The data reveals that the mathematics and and reading are, are very closely related to financial literacy. The 80% of the financial literacy scores with, uh, skills can be measured in the math and reading assessments, while 20% of the score reflects that the unit that are uniquely captured by the financial literacy assessment. Basically, what they're saying there is that the worse you, worse you are in math, the worse you are in financial literacy, and that's. Uh, I'm, I'm, there's possibly some truth with that, but I'm going to tell you here's how it is. And our financial literacy used to be, my dad and my uncle were able to be in very poor situations as children. But they knew the American dream. And when they decided to follow it, my dad was able to get to the bank and get the financing for a fertilizer company. He fertilizer he developed, started a small company, it was bought out by a company out of, that was out of 18 nations, and he was executive vice president for almost 20 years for his retirement. And when he became his banker, was Mr. Mayo, and Mr. Mayo was a part of our family. We knew who he was. And he taught my dad the financial financial uh, places his business should be to be financially. But that was a almost like a tribal knowledge. It was not handed down to the children. The education system does not provide it. So... One thing why I'm doing this video is to say that we're going to be asking for funds for our nonprofit called Kelly's Hope. We're also going to be asking for donations. You can track all these donations. It's not to pay us or for us to profit. It's for us to start financial literacy classes to be able to provide the super parenting book to every child in America. Because here's the deal. If I if in school in high school, if you had a business ownership fair project, even if not everyone played the business owner, but they knew how the, how it operated, what benefit would that be? What benefit if you had to, if your child had saved the money that they made as a teenager or got or st or whims whimsically came up with some idea to get a great allowance? That money adds up. And what happened if you go back even further and you, as a future parent, years ago, didn't have a $100,000 wedding? At 18 years of age, that we're giving debts, we're, we're giving degrees for debt, and we're strapping a whole generation with a nightmare. And growing up without having that burden of student loan debt that's one of my missions in doing this I worked in banking and there's a better way to do this so super parenting help the, helps the parents through help, helps their young children integrate into a system where they're financially savvy without the education system and using our existing laws and programs by the time they're 18 so we ask for donations. It'll show where it's going. Part of it will be going to help us get the nonprofit started, Kelly's Hope. And if you want to find out more about this, go to DonnieWiseLive.com backslash Kelly's Hope. Um, and it will detail the story of my friend and what happened to her and why we are doing this. 
Thank you for your time today, and we'll talk soon. And anytime you would like to contact me, I'm Donnie Wise at EmpowerTheConsumer.com or area code 919-208-5605.